What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. That's me. You know what, Ben? I don't even mind conceding the spot of the one true host to you today because today is your birthday! It is my birthday! Yay! The, the big, well, technically, as you're listening to this at home, it probably won't be, but as of recording, it is, in fact, October 25th. Yes. And I am, in fact, 33 years old. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I know. I know. Look at you go. It's like, I, I feel like I'm in a uh, that that stretch of, of aging that feels very, very, very just like utterly irrelevant. Like, yeah, yeah. You're like the 33, 32. Yeah, it's like when you get up to like, 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 I feel like the, the, and at each decade, as you kind of like, like start creeping up on like the next one, it's yeah. like, oh man, like 37. It's like, okay, like we're, we're getting in on like 38, you know, which means 39 and 39 right. basically means 40. Um, but I feel like right now it's just sort of like, I've got like a big swath of like yeah. open, open air before you're just me. In your early thirties, living your best 30 life. Exactly. You and know, just quietly, the dirty thirties, as they say. Is that what they say? I don't know. What would that even mean? I don't know. It does rhyme. So it's probably true i'm gonna go with poopy diapers yeah that's exactly that's, what it means the dirty <laughs> 30s means you're changing diapers Change. it's not it's nothing not, not nearly as fun as it sounds no yeah not at all yeah. not, although it doesn't really sound that fun anyway it sounds well, kind of I, like, I mean it just depends you know i mean maybe you're out there like four wheeling maybe you're out there doing spartan races you know okay when you put it like that it does yeah. sound like a heck of a lot of fun yeah you yeah. know okay so that's a funny thing because i feel like this idea of going like four wheeling or getting one of those like all terrain rain vehicles you know like the quads yeah. that you like go out like, like we did at mike's bachelor party yes okay so the yeah. great example great mm. great throwback so for for um gma member mike's bachelor party last year we were at snowshoe mountain resort in west virginia and yeah, one we of were. the things we did was we rented these four like off-road like um side by side like buggies that we like drove out through the woods and then we had like a cool like dinner with like mountainside views it was really beautiful and awesome yeah it but was like good. I see people all the time like driving down the highway and they've got like a trailer that they're pulling behind their vehicle that's just like loaded up with these like off-road vehicles that they've clearly taken out and, like, yeah. and, like mudding in and stuff and I'm like uh, it's like one of these things where I just so badly and desperately want like greater access to to the things to that like particular yeah. activity but like we grew up in a household where i feel like dad's like whole mantra was like everything that we have is like human powered you know so it's like running bicycling yeah you know it's like like if you were even in like for like going into like aquatic sports it was it was just swimming you know we did all of those activities but it was never uh or or more infrequently was it the like powered version right, of yeah. any of those? Yeah, yeah. We didn't ever, have, you know, we had like we, we never had like a like a go kart. You know, we only had access to we had canoes, and not boats with motors. Yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a better <laughs> yeah. example than swimming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and and so it's like now reaching like adulthood it's like this subject that, like i constantly like want to like broach with my friends which is just like guys what i would really love to do what i would really love to do is for all of us to go and buy our own off-road all-terrain vehicles yeah and like this is like what we go and do on the weekends is just go like like drift you know mm -hmm. as it were right th through the muds through the muds through the muds and such yeah and so but like it's it like i think the thing is is that because all of those activities that we did were so like manpowered it also is like very much reflected in all of our friends now as adults who are just all cyclists right. or you know like just general like endurance athletes mm -hmm. of some kind or another right and it's like it still feels like i'm stuck in this like no 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 like this is like one of those things in my head it's like illegal is what i'm trying I, to say I, I understand exactly what you mean where it's like it feels like i wasn't raised doing these sort of things so i am not allowed to do these sort of things yeah. as an adult 
Um, but here's the other here's the other caveat I would throw out there is that I feel like the other one of the other things that it felt like instilled into us. Or, or for for whatever reason, it feels like you're not allowed to like go do those things or like claim you enjoy doing those things unless you went through the like hard work and effort it took to own the products involved. You know, like there's nothing stopping you from going to like some sort of you know rally park where you just rent the things oh, and have yeah. have a yeah. have a weekend fun of dirting around you Dirt, know and it's like, around. but somehow it's like that wouldn't be the same and it's like no but it probably would be like well, at right now you're at zero and it's like I'm, I'm i'm right there with you i'm like i i like even though that would be available i'm like i just i feel like i'd rather own it you know no i but see <laughs> yeah. that's the thing too is that like on the on there's a handful of occasions in my life where i've actually had the opportunity to like get behind the wheel of like one of these like rigs and um one of them of course was at like mike's bachelor party where obviously we're out there and there's like very strict rules and like regulations about like you may not pass the front car right which yeah. is like the guide who's like taking you out there and it's like and if we see you back there getting squirrely then like that's it you're like going back to camp like absolutely in no way shape or form should you be right. like taking it to like full speed at any the, time the fun is that you are driving it in the woods okay nothing else right right yeah. right yeah it's like in, yes. for like safety and liability purposes like i completely and utterly understand why this is going to be like a really important facet of yeah. the process they, they don't like, want you to sue the mouth and they don't want to lose their you know expensive machinery exactly yeah. exactly yeah you, you are like the 10th person today to get behind the wheel of this thing and we need to make sure it continues to drive for right ever and ever and ever and um the other occasion was we were down in the dominican republic alice and i very early on in our relationship i think we've been <coughs> dating for like six months and it was yeah. just like i was like let's just go like on an adventure and so so we did it and we like we had both like <clears throat> booked these i remember alice and i actually got into like a fight over this particular <laughs> oh uh, boy this particular thing because we, we both picked like an excursion you know you go down and you're like staying in like one of these like all-inclusive resort type things or whatever and um she wanted to go and tour the capital city uh, which is Santo Domingo, I believe. And so we went and we did this like historic walking tour, like, you know, where we, you know, we brought like like the fancy camera and we took pictures and, you know, did the whole thing. We like listened to the guide who spoke like seven languages. And it was all like, it was very like cultural and interesting and like, you know, just kind of like fascinating to see yeah. the history of this particular place and how it was discovered and like blah, blah, blah. And then my version of it was let's go and rent ATVs and just go hucking it through yeah like the mud that is in between all the sugar canes out in the fields yeah. of the Dominican Sounds fun. which I would actually say ended up being its own cultural experience for a completely different reason because you were like in extreme rural Dominican Republic right and so you got to see a bunch of stuff that you just you know was not the resort it was like these are like the farmers out here that like raise sugar cane and so that was really cool but i remember like we got out there and like i i was like i was such a good sport yesterday on the walking tour and now i'm so excited that we got these like bandanas and helmets and sunglasses and i'm gonna like hit all the mud puddles and i i think maybe because like it was like a different country like it seemed like there was like a little bit more tolerance for you just going and like jimmying it a little bit yeah sure like right you know <laughs> you were, you were just sort of allowed to the rules are look i went to a water park on my honeymoon when me and beth went on our honeymoon down to cancun we went to um uh, a mexican water park called Jelha. okay yeah and i remember getting there and it was like it was so free form compared to like an american water park as to be like almost uncomfortable like it was it it was like i don't uh, am i allowed to just go grab a snorkel off here do i need to like rent it do i need to check out it do i need to check it out you know and it's like no you just gotta pick them up you know just whatever just go pick it up just, just then you're just using it it's fine you know and it's like okay all right all right and then it's like okay where where do we get in the water where are the boundaries of where we're allowed to snorkel it's like there's the ocean just go it's like <laughs> he's like like yeah, but like we're at the park, so certainly there's like an area. Like, is there are there dangerous fish in here? Are you like accounting for that? And it's like it's the ocean. Of course, there's dangerous fish. Just get in there. You know, the, the limit like, does you, not you, exist. Yeah, the limit does not exist. Enter the water wherever you see fit. Okay, you know, you have too many questions. Yeah, too many questions. Just go do it. It's yeah. like okay, all right. 
right? And it, I remember just feeling like, yeah, like there's no, there's no lie. I mean, there's certainly, I guess there were lines and stuff, but it was like, it was very just like, come as you are, go where you want, do as you please. Like, there's not like, no, whatever, whatever. You're like, okay, okay. It seems like, it seems like if I, I feel like there should be a, it, there's normally more safety regulations in place at places like this that normally you're just like, God, these guys are like really overreacting to everything. Isn't it? That's yeah. exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. It's so funny yeah. to me that like when you're in somewhere that has all the rules and regulations, you're like, wow, uptight much? I know. Like, okay, <laughs> everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Calm down. I know. Now I'm like, what, what if there's sharks, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, yeah, well, there could be. Yeah. I don't know. It's the ocean. <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah. That's how nature works. Yeah. Anyway, enjoy your snorkel. Good yeah. luck. Have fun. Yeah, so anyway, we did snorkel, and I think we saw at least one, like, you know, like, barracuda out there, which is, like, it's, like, one of those things, like, it's not going to hurt you because you're way bigger than it, and it's not interested in interacting with you. But, like, you are, like, you, like, the barracuda knows that about you, but you don't really know what barracudas think, you know? That's true. You're like, hmm. Like, it's going to see you and be like, hey, that's big fish. I should probably stay away from that. You're going to see that and be like, boy, we are not in our element. We are in that. We That belongs in the water, and we don't. And <laughs> yeah, it has teeth, and we don't. <laughs> While it cannot eat me, it can still harm me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet it wants to. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Anyway, um, go ahead. So you're you're in the you're you're loaded up. You've got your bandana and your helmet. You're ready to jimmy the the ATV yeah, through just, the sugar canes. Absolutely. And and again, like, you know, this is like early on in in mine analysis relationship. So I'm like excited to like show her like how cool I am. Yeah, right. Like you know, watch like, me a bit get ready to rip it through this dirt. Yeah. I know, yeah. You're gonna like, be so impressed yeah. with me. <laughs> I mean, there's like the what like this is like one of those things where it's like, you know, you, you see the like in movies and stuff, like the guy roll up on like the cool motorcycle and it's like there's like your perception as to how this is actually going. And then there's like the reality attached to like how people actually feel about these situations once like placed in them mm -hmm. and i think that that's what like what i was learning a yeah. little bit which was that like my thought and expectation this even goes back to like me in high school like with my subwoofers for example like yeah. in my mind i was so proud of my subwoofers and i thought they were the coolest thing that you could possibly have in a car and i remember like just my heart of hearts loving my subwoofers yeah and then as a result it meant that like like when i pulled into the school parking lot i would like switch the song to like the bassiest song i could find i crank it up to 11 and it would just sort of be like boom yeah you know, my license plate was rattling and i was like everybody's walking in the school right now is like dang that guy. like legitimately what I thought was happening. Right. And, and we've talked about this before too, like with the, like the guy who has like the um, extremely loud exhaust on his like car motorcycle yeah. or something. It's like, it's like they definitely think, you know, the louder you can be, the better. And I am so loud. Nobody can hear themselves think. Right. That's how cool I am. Right. Anyway, all directly transferable to this particular situation where I'm like, this is going to be really cool. I'm going to get to like really show off in front of like Alice and just like, you know, we'll we'll like go skidding and we'll like I'll have like the like the fishtailing going on and we'll go fast and, you know, like hit all the like mud puddles. Right. And, like, really make an adventure out of it. Alice did not want that at all. Even right. One little bit. And so, like, you know, we're sitting there and, I mean, it was a type of thing where it was like, you know, I would, like, swerve it, you know, and stuff like that and get it to, like, just, like, loosen up a little bit. And, it, it I mean, I could, like, feel her, like, gripping me, but not in the, like, adorable, like, oh, like, this is, like, a fun way for her to, like, get to, like. Like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm glad you're here to, like, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. it was like, she was like, Ben, stop <clears throat> now. Yeah. St and it was like, oh, Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. no. Like, <laughs> I have. You were being reckless, sir. I have drastically misread this situation. Mm -hmm. But I do remember in my head thinking, like, I'm like, but yesterday I was so. I asked all those questions. Remember to the tour guide? Remember how attentive I was to the, to the questions and stuff? And, like, you know, it was almost like. It was like the direct trade here was that this was going to be, like, just a hooting and hollering good time. <laughs> right, right. But it turns out, like, your ability to feign interest in. Uh, a walking tour does not directly translate in Alice's ability to not be afraid of the situation. Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. Absolutely. <laughs> and again, as a reminder, like she doesn't, I mean, she knows me well enough to have traveled internationally with me, but like, yeah. you know, <clears throat> we're still less than a year into our relationship, you know? Yeah. So it's like, this is still one of those things where it's like, she doesn't know 
how much like I personally value my own safety. Yeah. Uh, at this, like I think now as we've gotten like a lot older, she knows that like I don't want harm to come to myself or her mm-hmm. even more than she does. Right. Um. Like that. <clears throat> I, I even remember this being the case like growing up all the time with mom. Like you know where she would like you know we we would be doing something you know <laughs> no doubt reckless no doubt and she would like tell us to be careful and it's like mom I don't want to get hurt exactly. <laughs> like, Come on. <laughs> Obviously. Jeez. I know. All that to say, though, uh, it means that in the, the scarce few situations where I have gone about renting my uh, ATV slash mud terrain vehicles, yeah. um, I feel like, I- if anything, it has only just like left me wanting even more uh, Mexican water park freedom. Yeah. You know, just to just to be able to like really like go after it. It just sounds it. like you need to get out there like probably just like without Alice. Well, or yeah, without Alice or without like a guide who can, yeah. like, you know, tell right, you, right, like, right, right. like, no, sorry, you can't pass the leader. It's like, mm-hmm. but, you know what? I just want to go. I just want to go. I just want to go. Like, that's like, that's like the, the, I don't know. The, like, so it's, it'd be like so freeing. But those places like, exist. Do they know? exist? Yeah, absolutely. They exist. I remember once upon a time when I was working over at the concert venue that nice, I used to work nice, at. Yeah. Nice bingo. I was at one of the, at one of the marketing conferences and it was in um, Columbia, South Carolina. Okay. Um, it's hot there. Okay. Yeah. That's on like every billboard. They tell you how hot it is. Oh, it's, uh, it's, yeah. like, a, it's like part of like the culture. <laughs> it's like part it's of like, the culture. It's it, hot here. It's hot here. It's hot. It's like we're not quite tropical enough to where it's like it's like beachy. It's like instead it's just it's just it's kind of south. It's hot. And therefore hot. Yeah. But so one of the things they did uh, in the evenings is like we're all going to go have fun. And this was like this is the first one I'd ever been to. And so like in my mind like marketing con was like yeah you're gonna sit in like a room all day you're gonna listen to people talk and then you're gonna go back to your rooms like i think i vastly underestimated what conferences meant and that they are often like things people desperately look forward to all year as like this awesome thing yeah i was like okay uh but like they bring us to like this adventure park like at night which was awesome there's like you know big zip line and um you know um what and like atvs and stuff okay okay it was super fun i like the sounds of this yeah it was a very cool it was a very cool um uh outing and i remember we were i was you know we were loading up to do the atv stuff and i remember feeling a little bit frustrated because like you go out in like sort of like a line yeah you know so you're all you're going through the trails and stuff like that and of course they give you the spiel like whatever you know don't be be safe don't fall someone actually did fall off and it was my roommate oh my for gosh the trip. yeah they were like all like their face was all like scuffed up for the rest of the trip it seemed like it was this instant karma for them though because then they had this just great story for everyone and everyone was constantly asking them about it and they ended up i don't know anyway not important they ended up being like the cool kid that, yeah it was like like, man, I wish I could have crashed. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. geez. laughs> no. <laughs> It was it was very I don't know I remember it being very like weirdly opportunistic that, that, that like everyone sort of knew you're like oh yeah Chase crashed and then like every day in the morning they'd have like a drawing for some like you know big prize and like the morning after he crashed they drew his name out of the drawing and he won like an iPad and like you know that he oh. and they're like now what happened to your face Chase and it was like and then you know he got to tell his whole funny story to everyone it was like yeah it was like oh man every just it was like a a weird way to win a lot of points to a lot of luck and circumstance over there okay. How about this okay. it's like yeah it's like how, how did you make it in life because everybody's got that like right place right time yeah story <laughs> yeah. it's like well there i was laying yeah. face down in the mud yeah <laughs> and, uh, I, I don't want to undersell chase he was extremely good at his job and very much cared about it and i think now he works at legoland and is one of the just the nicest people ever but anyway way to go chase way to go way to go i remember you crashing that atv uh anyway though i remember being frustrated because like where i was in line was like like all the was like behind the person who was really cautious, oh, you know, and okay, it was like yeah. I could th- and it was like very clear, like everyone in front of them was just like gone. And like everyone behind this person was like, you know, just having to kind of there, there's no way to pass. You know, you're just on the trail. Yeah. So it's like, I guess I'm just going to have to kind of go at this this slow pace here. I really wish I'd been right in front of you because then I really could have gone. It would have been way more fun. You're seeing the problem. Yeah. You're seeing the problem. See, even you're mm-hmm. you're telling me of the, the place you can go. Yeah. And the problem still exists. Well, the problem could exist, but there were plenty of people in front of that person who just got to rip it and have fun. Oh, yeah. I yeah. see. It's there. Could you have gotten around this person? I, I, I mean, I don't know. 
Okay. I don't really remember it that well at this point. I just remember the feeling. I'm surprised that this isn't like the most crystallized memory of your entire life. No. Given that it's obviously the opportunity of a lifetime well, <laughs> to, to drive an ATV as fast as you as can. As fast as you want. Yeah, that, that was it. I remember one, there was two other incidents, like as safe as <laughs> obviously the company wanted all of their marketing employees from the whole country to be. One, Chase got thrown from his uh, ATV and then someone else was doing the zip line and I guess they like put their hand on the wire as they were going and they were yeah i mean it's exactly what you think like do not do that because it like ripped like a giant stripe of skin off their hand and they were Ooh, yeah that like, gave me the full body shivers yeah okay yeah. okay maybe maybe we maybe as a species we don't need to go as hard as we can right see, maybe, so. yeah, i've learned i've learned my lesson i've now backtracked yeah I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't mind a quiet afternoon inside with a nice a nice paperback <laughs> <laughs> so those there were other things that were uh Grabbing my attention that evening. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Those but I did do the zipline several times. That was fun too. But you didn't grab the. the I cable. didn't grab it. Although I remember them like not having a good way to stop you at the end. Like they had like a, yeah, you, you can pull this thing if you want to break. And it was like, but they'll just like catch you. And there were people to get down to the end. They had these like mats you could run into. I guess. And like some people would just run into them full force of the zipline, just like smack. It was like. You guys need a better braking system or something here. Like, or something. Or something. Yeah. It's like, we can catch you. It's like, you can't catch a person moving 15 miles an hour at you. This their is full body weight, you know? Oh my gosh. It's so true, too, because this is this is like one of those things that's like I learned the extreme hard way, which is uh giving somebody a high five from a moving car. Oh, ow. Yeah. yeah. Gonna be a lot of a lot of force. A lot of force. I remember this being a thing because in the early days of our cross country training, uh, we would be out and like our, our coach would have us like all meet at like a pull off on the parkway or something. So like we'd all, you know, it'd be like summer running. So like it wasn't like officially like sanctioned events yet. Everybody, right. like all these high school students, we get out there like in, you know, our, our little cars and stuff. Right. It's like run club. So it's not mandatory, but like it was. Anyway, it's like it's not mandatory, but if you want to be on varsity, you better be there. You better be here. <laughs> Um, but like, I remember there being a day that like, I think somebody was showing up late and they had like another, like like one of the other, our teammates in the car or something. And so I've already like left the parking lot and I'm like running down this like stretch of the parkway. And as they come up and, you know, like I extend my hand to like give them like a high five in the car as they go by. And of course they're going at like, you know, 20 miles an hour, which means it was a 20 mile an hour high five. Right. And it was like, I think both of us just almost broke our hands. Right. Yeah. It was <laughs> turns like, turns out that, that was a bad idea. Tur yeah. Turns out when you give somebody a high five, even a good high five, right. It's not a 20 mile an hour high five. Yeah. No. Yeah. So don't do that. Don't do that. No, no, uh, fast motion high five in. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, for safety reasons. Yeah. Anyway, uh, to, to shift gears, just a, just a smidgen here. Um, it is in fact, yeah, it's my birthday, which is which is fun. It's yeah. very exciting. Uh, but also more importantly is that tomorrow is officially Addison's first birthday. What? You've been a dad for a whole year. Can't believe it. Can't Goodness believe it. Me. It it definitely flew by. Yeah, it there's no doubt, by. right? It's just like this morning I was like watching her in the living room as she like, you know, sat up and then crawled across the room and then like pulled up on like a bench and then like, I don't know, just like, you know, looked at me, held herself up like in a standing position, was clapping and smiling and laughing. And I was like, you just did like, like every single one of the like, like, like last seven things you did, all of them are like like fun new skills right it's yeah. like and you just did, you just did all of them <laughs> just all, did all at once. once yeah it's like no big deal like what i know very impressive very, I, I loved it um this past weekend we had uh her birthday party which i think was um um maybe maybe possibly verging on slightly over the top for a first birthday party i mean that's how the what you're going to discover is that next year it will not be <laughs> yeah that's fair that's fair it's like it's like okay like the, the firstborn's first birthday is, right especially like, for the parents it's like this this is a big deal we did a whole year well that's the thing especially about like the firstborn first birthday is that it's like they like addison probably won't remember it that much but like the real celebration is like you and alice may it the whole year that's true that's yeah. true yeah there's there's a, there's like a whole new piece of perspective which is just like how impressive it is and like even even now it's like you know I've, i was talking with you and beth last night we were over at y'all's house and it was just like the fact that y'all have like successfully uh you know raised three boys mm -hmm. two two of which at the same time yeah you know it's just like i'm like man 
perspective is like one of the most <laughs> powerful components of existence right. because you're just like all of a sudden you're like what you guys did is not like easy yeah i like, know it's like, hard yeah, for sure it's very it's very cool um but yeah no it's been it's been really uh it's been very exciting as we've we've kind of like worked towards addison's first birthday because i've i've definitely had like the the vision for it pretty much since like the day she was born oh man yeah i mean it that that much was clear yeah yeah, yeah. you guys had like many things that were like you had like so, like i guess the theme was rainbows and there was like so much of the theme was like prevalent like everywhere but then it was like clearly not just like in the decorations or the cake it was like you had stuff that you'd been lining up for the whole year yeah pretty much and and so like the the reason behind it is that like i, I had talked about this on the pop like probably over a year ago now but alice and i did have two miscarriages prior to having addy and the baby that you have after a miscarriage is very frequently referred to as like a rainbow baby. Right. And so for us, it was like this like really, really, really big deal. So starting with her like monthly photos, like the whole year, it was like this fun, like almost like quiet game. I think that we were playing like, you know, <coughs> through Instagram and stuff like that, just to see if anybody would like realize what we were up to. Right. But, um, as we went, like her first month photo, she was like in red. Second month was like an orange color. Third month was yellow. Fourth was green. Yeah. So like over the course, and there were like shades in there because there's obviously like, you know, yeah. more months and colors of the rainbow. But over the course of like the whole year, we had like made her like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Like, right. So it was like really neat to like have like all like her photos strung up and be able to like see like the whole finished rainbow having like come together. Yeah. Which was really, really fun and cool um and then it, it made for a lot of fun otherwise too because like we we baked or i baked her a cake which i was really excited about but like you know like the cake layers all yeah had, it was know. very nice looking at like yeah very vibrant uh five layer cake there yeah yeah yep. colors of the rainbow and then it was completely covered in sprinkles i was so I, I i was so proud of how the cake turned out i couldn't believe it because like i've i've seen them before because it was basically just like a like white frosting but then just absolutely like head to toe covered in sprinkles right and i have seen them you know before like on baking shows or <coughs> you know like cakes the grammars or whatever right and it was like well that's no, it's, it's very impressive like it looks extremely good uh like when they do it and i was like i don't know you know w w will it turn out right when i when i try to give it a whirl seemed like it did and it did it turned out really good but um so anyway, we had this like really fantastic party for her on Sunday, which was like just so great. And it was like such like an outpouring of love and stuff. But I have had like the weirdest thing happening basically like since the party. So technically like today's my birthday, tomorrow's her birthday. Um, but I have just like, <coughs> it, it's almost like we, we talk about name of the wind a lot. And in name of the wind, there's this concept of like the sleeping mind. And yeah. that's like in order to learn the true name of something you have to like awaken like your sleeping mind which is this like much greater sense of understanding deep beneath the surface yeah well i feel like i have been having this like just like total deep like very uh i don't know like like solid slab of sadness like sitting deep inside of myself yeah but it's like i'm not even like consciously thinking about the sadness but like as like i walked into the office yesterday like cat who works here was like are you okay and i was like not really but well, I yeah you did not seem okay yesterday yeah but like what was what is the sadness well i think it's just like it's like like alice wears her emotions like right on her sleeves mm -hmm. right like so yeah. she's you know over the process of the past couple of like weeks she's you know, like cried a whole bunch of times. So like Addison uh, started saying like mama uh, for like the first couple of times, nice. which of course like completely brought her to tears and it's been really cute. Um, but I think that like for me, I've been nothing but like so excited and, and I'm this way too, like with like super Carlin brothers, even like each year that goes by, I'm just like, like we did it for another year. Like we we've continued to do it for another year. Yeah, we like, have. I'm just like, I'm so proud that like this has happened. And so as we've gotten close to like Addie's birthday, I've been nothing but just like actively and consciously excited. But I almost think that like my sleeping mind is like hardcore 
mourning like like the end of the first year of her life right. basically yeah like you um, it'll, it'll never be the first year of her life again exactly yeah and and so <laughs> i think that like yesterday i was feeling this like very very deeply inside of like my being but it wasn't even the type of thing that like my brain was like actively acknowledging so i, I was feeling all of like the weight and emotion and everything to do with it but like my my brain just wouldn't let me like consciously think about it for right. some reason. Yeah. And so this was I, I think more than anything, like it makes sense to me. Like I, I understand like why why I'm sad. Like, you know, it's not like hard to for me to like wrap my head around. But it did definitely bring to light like a kind of emotional being that I'm not necessarily sure that I've um actively like acknowledged before, mm-hmm. which is almost like like this thought of of your sleeping mind so to speak just for the sake of the example to be experience experiencing an emotion that is actively separate from like the one that like i'm like wearing on my face right or like running through like my train of thoughts necessarily okay um so it's like i'm like that's this is like an interesting thing to have now reflected on and like maybe like learned about myself is that like there there are certainly occasions where i can i like i can tell that i am like frustrated or angry or mad or sad or something like that but it's like but but like i can't even tell you why oh my gosh dude uh it is this this exact thing happens to me like not infrequently interesting okay (laughs) yeah we're like i will you know and like like beth is like really empathetic and she will like always pick up on it or something and it's not like i won't be able to feel it but we'll just be like driving somewhere i'll just be you know i'll be around the house and she'll just you know i i can like tell that i am like very upset or like really angry and she's like i just wish you could just tell me like what was wrong and i'm like i wish i could tell you what was wrong i wish i i knew what was wrong right and it's just like i like i don't i don't know i'm just angry and it's like i like really have to like just sort of like let the emotion happen and like try and like focus in on like what is actually causing this and it's like like after enough time it'll eventually sort of like bubble up and i'll realize like okay this this one this this like triggered something and it's actually this other thing that's been bothering me for maybe a while and now it's sort of like surfacing and it's just like but in the meantime i'm just like angry or upset about something and it's like i like I, I don't know why. I j- like I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's making me so mad right now. I know. You know? And it's like it's very, very frustrating because like I like don't like feeling the emotion, <laughs> and I don't know what's causing it. <laughs> it's just like happening to you. <laughs> right. No. It, it's it's really it's really 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 strange. <clears throat> and and again, like I, it's funny because even as you're describing it, like my mind is even still going like further into like the like little name of the wind example type things. But there's like one scene in particular where the main character like meets up with this like Feyen creature or whatever, and he has to like he starts composing her a song in his head, but like has to like break off a piece of his mind so that like it can go and like compose the song like over on its own. Yeah. But then like his consciousness like is like remaining like focused, like more in the present. Yeah. And it's almost making me wonder like whether or not like (coughs) when Patrick Rothfuss was putting together this story, he's actually like speaking about like a real thing that your brain is capable of like doing. Oh, well for sure. Okay. So this is a fun fact. Okay. Um, I remember once upon a time watching a, I think it was, I think it was a try guy video and they, they used to do this um trend or this this style of video called like four verse one or something okay where it would be like the four of them would try and um take on some expert in their field okay and um which by the way if you, before you leave the comments i'm aware of all the drama surrounding the try guys at the moment and stuff so i know it's just three of them now but uh, this <laughs> is just an old video <laughs> right okay anyway for, for reference sake for reference sake i got it oh man um anyway uh, so one of the times they were doing it though, it was crossword puzzles. Okay. And so it was like they're getting, you know, they were gonna go up against this like champion crossword puzzle guy who does like, you know, can you know finish the New York Times in like under ten minutes or something, you know, okay. every, you know whatever. And then and it was a you know it was a really informative video because they tell you like, oh, did you know most crossword puzzles have like a theme? And if you can figure out like the center word across the middle, like that probably is gonna help inform a bunch of other things. It's like, well, there's things I didn't know about crossword puzzles, you know. Yeah, I've definitely yeah. always thought crossword puzzles was more just like a, a game of like 
like trivia that you just play with yourself. It, yeah, yeah. But it's um, and I think yeah. For, to some extent it is but it's yeah to me it was always just like uh, it's, just, it's just a miracle someone figured out all of these letters could fit together and make words oh yeah you know yeah. <laughs> right like the, no one had any intent behind it but sure enough there is intent behind it anyway they kind of like talk about like th- like the process of doing it and like there's this phenomenon bingo in crossword puzzling or it like crosswords in particular activate this particular this exact mechanism in your brain where it's like you will like read a clue and it'll seem familiar and like you don't quite know you're like ah I, like what is that word i don't ugh. and like you'll think of you'll you'll basically set your brain a task to like go work on oh and wow so people who do crossword puzzles a lot will frequently experience this like sensation where like they'll be working on it and like two days later all of a sudden they'll just be like jam it was jam you know or like a jar that's the uh, you know whatever Whoa. it is and it's just like their brain was like yep let me go let me go run the processing on that and like you know i, I was thinking about like terry in uh soul going through the files it's just like um, let me just go send send some little piece of me off to go like look through the files and we'll find it eventually don't you we're, we're gonna get it back to you and then sure enough like you will find it like your brain is working on it even though you're com- you completely forget you're even working on it and it's just like two days later you're like oh there it was so it's like this is it's like a real thing your brain can do and it's like your like uh, i think yeah i think for whatever reason cross crossword puzzles like they make you try and think of very specific trivia or just like single words or like things you may have heard like in reference once upon a time and so yeah it's like these tiny bits of information you're not really holding that close to yourself but you do have access to it just might take some processing so your brain can do that just be like Whoop, uh, we're gonna send someone to work on that um, I, and I experience this sometimes, like a lot of times in conversation where it's just like, oh, I'm pretty sure I remember that. Uh, nah, I'll think of it later. And it's like, indeed, I do think of it later because it's like you send you send some piece of your mind off to just go work on it. And it's like it delivers it a little while later. <laughs> I, so I'm, I'm curious now, too, because like this is this is making <coughs> me wonder, like what what my what I have like trained my brain to do throughout the course of my life. And especially when it comes to like handling or working with like difficult emotions yeah. because like I can absolutely go back to like high school breakup type things, Mm -hmm. you know, like where, like, I'm sure you'd remember that back in the day I would, I would be like on my phone, like texting just nonstop, just just all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It was just sort of like, it was sort of how like I just operated always. I think it was probably more than anything. It was almost like my, like my nervous tick, if you will. It was almost like my brain wants that next thing right and so i was like i need to like you know keep keep my brain entertained and like i guess that's just the way that i did it it was like maybe like my alternative to like a video game or something right but so as a result it very frequently meant that like i was having breaking news relative to like my social life or like you know my relationships and stuff that it could pretty much just be happening like at all times Mm -hmm. and i do remember um, my first job ever was at, uh, Petland and I remember there'd be like days like where, you know, I might be like literally in the process of like going through like a breakup or like holding back tears, you know, in my car as I pulled into the parking lot or something like that, just like very upset. And then it's like, you know, like you walk in and it's like the second somebody was in front of you, it was like, Hey, how are you today? Like, what can I help you out with? You know? And it's like, and now we go through the course of like an eight hour work day all the while, just like, you know, and, and I mean, you could maybe see it as a distraction, but like, I also think that like a a big portion of it was that like, there was a different part of my brain that was over there, like trying to like sort through all the layers of like this complex piece of like social machinery that was happening Mm -hmm. and like, you know, how to like digest it. And then it was almost like the second you clock out and get back in your car, it was like, yeah. And I'm back into like, just having like, you know, (laughs) back to mid breakup. Where are we at? Like, you know, and it's like, it's almost like, you, I, I don't even know. I mean, possibly your brain's working on it. Possibly it was just like a, the ability to put it on pause. Um, but I definitely think it's like it's been the curious thing. That I, again, to bring it back, you know, full circle as I've been approaching Addison's first birthday is like I haven't been worried about it. I haven't been stressed about it. I haven't like no part of me has been anything other than excited about it. But like I could absolutely tell that like yesterday, especially like I think after her birthday was like officially officially over, it yeah. was like something was going on right you know like i was like i was like super super sad um 
So I don't know. It's it, it's uh, your crossword example is definitely like it's it's interesting to me because it's you know it, it, it like I I like to think that your brain could do something like that, but like maybe that confirms it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It's like a much more like real world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like studied example. Yeah. 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 And I mean, yeah, I don't know if it's like, a, I don't know if that's different from like, just like compartmentalizing emotions or anything. Maybe it's like a, a similar sort of function there. Yeah. But um, that, I don't know. Parenting, I think in general, just tends to make you <laughs> like a lot more emotional all the time it, it, about that, everything. And especially like, yeah, it is like the, the first year. Like I remember, um, all these things with like, uh, like Luke and the twins growing up and, uh, getting older is like, there's, there is this weird thing you start to notice where like so often in life when you're trying something new or you're like picking up a new thing, it's like, you're just encouraged to just like, oh yeah, well, it doesn't really matter if you fail the first time because you can just like keep trying it again, yeah. you know, but like with aging it's like there will only be the first time right now once it's not like okay you know what the next time i'm um you know teaching my child how to walk for the first time i'll do it differently and it's like well no you won't because now you can't <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like yeah in some capacity it's sort of like yeah like this that the opportunity to do that for the first time is already kind of like right come and gone right and it's like well yeah, maybe you'll have like a different kid or something but like that'll be a different kid it won't be how you treated this kid that way like the way you treated them this way the first time is the way they will have been trot the whole time right nice. yeah yeah i think that was that <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, yeah not yeah. the right word <laughs> so certainly can be so yeah everyone knows what i mean you yeah, get it i follow yeah yeah so there's like i don't know there and it's like i think you start to realize that it's like oh yeah i can't i can't do that for the first time with him again it's not like oh yeah the next time i do that for the first time it'll be i'll do it differently it's like because because you already did it but <laughs> right 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 yeah. yeah no it's a good it's a very good point it's a very good point um so I don't know. Yeah, it, it even brings me into like the the inside out mindset a little bit, like which I, I've always felt like was such a fantastic way of like starting to like visualize how your emotions might be like operating inside of your head. Yeah, like you got like the little console and it's like you know what anger is completely at the <coughs> wheel right now. Right. Um. But like when you think about like this compartmentalization of like emotions, it's almost like it's almost like sadness is over like in a cubicle right now, like vigorously working away. Right. You know, like with with like the consoles, like laptop. Yeah. You and know, like the circle of sadness. The circle yeah. of sadness. Yeah. 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 It's like it's it's inside of like its own space. It doesn't necessarily like be like it's not like the forefront. And I've still got like joy like hammering away up there, like doing, doing all her stuff. Right. You know, but in, in the meantime, yeah, sadness is over there, like big, big things going on. Well, that's exactly, but that's exactly what happens in inside out where it's just like, like, um, for well, the most part, like, like joy is trying to compartmentalize sadness, like while Riley's going to school. And it's like, I think, uh, for the most part for like minor, you know, things you're doing throughout your day, it's like, yeah, it, okay. That made me sad, but it's easy enough to just like push that to the side because I have more important things. But like what Riley in the movie is experiencing is like, like dr tremendous, the tremendous trauma of moving across the country as an 11 year old right, or whatever. And it's like, she's trying to, they're, they're trying to compartmentalize sadness, but at some point it's just like, no matter what they do, it's like, it's bleeding through and everything. And like, they keep trying to like push it down and it's like, you can't push it down. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It's coming. Everything she touches is sadness. All of your memories are becoming sad. How is yeah. it that this movie just continues to like? It's like on the surface, it's amazing, and then it's like when you dig deeper, it's even better. It's so good. I love Inside Out. Yeah, it's so it much. is fantastic. Okay, so sw we'll switch gears. We'll switch right. gears away right. from like our 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 deep. Um, uh, what is it called? Reflection yeah, of, okay. of our of ourselves. So you have you have a fun event going on this evening. Oh yeah, um, you're <laughs> heading to uh, to see uh, a, a musician. Yes. Who, who I if if I recall correctly, first concert you and I ever went to. Fact. Yes. Um, so it's cool that you're going to get the opportunity to see see another performance again. Yeah, here. no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> the one, the only Weird Al Yankovic. That's right. Are you excited? I am excited. Um, it's one of these things where so yeah, you're right. It was at me and you's first concert ever. Um actually it was at the um the Roanoke Performing Arts Theater <laughs> where I worked. 
Nice. For yeah. some time. You well, know. Perhaps well, you've heard. Yeah, oh yeah, no, it's come yeah. out. Now it's known as the Berglin Performing Arts Theater because they sold the naming rights. Um, I don't know if it sounds as good. Like, it's fine that they sold them, but they sold them to like a, it's like Berglin Automotive, you know? It's like a local automotive group. So now everyone, it just sounds like a, like a car company now. Yeah, a little yeah. bit, a little bit. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, that's there's, not really the point. There was a lot of drama <laughs> attached to the naming process of that particular building. There was, was there, there was. It was so. It was actually really funny because there was. We'd been doing all these deals with like um, whoever the whoever the Toyota dealer is in yep. town. Like they'd done some like work with us and they'd done some sponsorship stuff and like they were like expressed interest in the naming rights and stuff. And like that was part of why they even opened up the bidding. They're like, no, look, like because ha- everything has to like be like confirmed with the city and stuff. And they're like, no, we have like someone who absolutely wants to do it. But it's like you do have to open it up for bidding. It's not just like, yes, you've done like this. Is, like it has to be open or whatever. And they had just like opened up like a dealership like, you know half a mile down the road yeah. on um you know 581 it, and yeah, it's like it, right next to the concert venue which is also right next to the road so it like had toyota gotten it they would have had just like a whole mile of toyota advertising basically it all the way down it would have been it would have <laughs> been pretty huge because exactly where they placed the dealership was it almost feels like they were doing like these two decisions like completely in tandem <laughs> absolutely with yeah. one another yeah it was like we're gonna have like our huge name on the massive building that you drive by and then right after that you're gonna see our massive car dealership yeah that's exactly what it was and i mean for all intents and purposes it seemed like the, it was just gonna go off completely without a hit they weren't gonna have any problems so they open up the bidding and they put in their bid and it's like i guess uh and then just like out of nowhere like completely like out of left field like i guess Berglund got wind of it and was like uh we're not gonna let that happen so they, <laughs> so they, outbid just, them. they just outbid them like at the last second and it was like what <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> Like everybody's already tentatively calling it like the blank, de- yeah, the blank yeah. Toyota dealership. I know. It was like, uh, okay, I guess we're <laughs> shifting gears. <laughs> Literally, so that was kind of funny. I mean, it was like, okay, I didn't. Well, apparently, you know, you got swept up in the, you know, local car automotive dealership, you know, yeah. drama, political shuffling going on there. But that's how the name came about. Anyway, not important. Um, that was the first uh, concert you and I ever went to. Ironically, it was also the last concert I ever worked on at the um, oh, at no the way. theater before like I left. Yeah, so that was cool. And now, um, and I remember like it would be like it was sort of this funny thing when I was working on it because they're like, okay. Um, do you want to work on Weird Al? I was like, absolutely. That's fine with me. Theater show. I got it. No big deal. And like it like completely sold out. And I think like no one else at the building seemed, I think, like understood Weird Al at all. You know? Oh, really? Like they were just like, yeah, th- oh, yeah. Kind of like funny guy from the 90s. Right. Like I was like when they handed it to me, I was like, well, this is just, I'm not even going to have to work on this. You know, it's like on sale, sold out. Right. <laughs> you know, more or less. I was like, this is going to be so easy. And it was like one of those things where like. I, like I did the exact same amount of work I did for every other show, and like people kept coming in like, "Dude, really great job selling this one out!" Like, wow, like really surprised. Now it's just like, I really didn't do anything extra at all. <laughs> you know, Weird, Weird Al is just super. I was great, just like, you know? yeah, it, was, it turns out Weird Al is just like more popular than you guys realize. I don't know why it's surprising to you, but whatever. And uh, I remember like actually staying like watching that show, and it was hilarious. Um, and so when it was coming back, uh, when I saw it was coming back, I was like, oh man, you know what? you know what I want let's get tickets let's go it's gonna be fun so uh I bought tickets like forever ago and I like looked at the calendar this week I was like oh my god is this week gotta gotta figure that out um but so I'm pretty excited about I'm not sure he like dropped a new album or anything though it's not like so I don't know if it's just gonna be like tons of old songs which would be pretty cool with me because like I that's mostly what I know yeah um or I think we talked to someone one of our patreon calls it's just like a bunch of original songs and I'm like okay well then I'm just gonna have to like go with it on the fly. <laughs> I, I mean, no but, matter what, I'm sure it'll be just. But that. I think it's gonna be, yeah, I think it's gonna be very funny. An absolutely great time. Have you ever yeah. met Weird Al? I have not actually met him. No. Okay. Yeah. Oh. He, uh, he came to the to the venue once while I was there. It was that last time, and uh, there wasn't. I wasn't a part of like doing the meet and greet or anything for it. Oh, so 
Bummer. I know. Bummer. Would've, pretty cool. It'd be pretty cool. Would have been cool. So yeah. do you have an outfit picked out? Are you going to like... Oh, eight? man. Not, not in particular. I certainly can't wear what I'm wearing right now. Oh, no. I'll no, tell no, you that. No. Yeah, this you're, is not weird. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you'd look like a square. Uh, I know. I know. You got to wear like some sort of like... I know like the Hawaiian shirts are like sort of a thing. Weird okay. Al concerts. And okay. if I remember last time, a lot of people had like, like tin foil and stuff going okay. on yeah like you know, i mean people dress weird for weird out there's no doubt are you gonna you gonna, you gonna incorporate a little little tin foil well into I, the old I'm, fit? I'm certainly not going into the to. drip yeah into the drip yeah we'll see we'll see i don't know um at all what i'm gonna wear yeah that's that is tbd at the moment tbd okay okay yeah. i love it i love it but um, i'm excited about it i'll report back on how it was i'm sure it's gonna be hilarious it's like it's like i don't like actively seek out like weird owl music especially these days because uh, it's not like making tons of new stuff or anything. But yeah. it's one of those things like when you start listening to it, it's so funny. Like it seems like he's just like, oh, just change the words to some songs. But it's like, dude, I think like underrated, one of the biggest like comic geniuses. Like, you, you know, know. It, it's like one of those things where like I've I've wondered before, like I know like playing the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't know how to put that in air quotes. Playing the Super Bowl, I think, is like a like a very like notable accolade that like a musician can have. Yeah. Like sometimes I wonder, like when you get into that like upper crust of people who have like made famous songs and stuff, whether or not having them been like parodized, I'm making that word up. Yeah. A parody yeah. of their song, it, like by Weird Al. If there's if that's almost like a like a, like a um. I'm an iconic musician merit badge. Oh yeah, you like, know what yeah, I mean. Like, like weird, I covered my like, song. Right, right. Yeah. It's like it's like I got my Super Bowl right here. I've got my Grammy. Got my Weird Al badge. Like yeah, you know, you kind of gotta you kind of gotta like fill out the old vest as it absolutely, were. Absolutely, absolutely. The question is, Ben, will Weird Al ever play the Super Bowl? <gasps> That'd be the best. That would be the best. It'd be yeah. pretty great. Yeah. I feel like we're living in the the era of nostalgia still yeah. long enough that it, it feels. It feels possible. Yeah. And what would be really cool is if they had him do like perform some of the songs or even have like the other artists come out. That and would perform, be that like, would that's what would really sell it. It yeah. would be so cool. Like, you know, if, if yeah, like they're doing like he goes out and is performing Amish Paradise and the guy who sings Gangster's Paradise like comes out and is singing Amish Paradise with Weird Al. Right. Covering his own song. Yeah. Oh, man. That'd be crazy. That would be be really crazy. Yeah, Yeah, that'd be really fun. Um, On that note, though, so on the note of music, I'm I'm also curious right now whether or not there's a debate happening on the bingo cards as to us talking about Weird Al fail is does that count as failing at music? Um, But this weekend as well, uh, I have a big musical event coming up. I'm going to the When We Were Young Music Festival in in Las Vegas, um, which I am like so absolutely ridiculously curious to see how it it's going to shake out because i know that like from the very beginning when i looked into doing this particular event there was a lot of speculation that um you looked surprised about something so just i was like as you were as we were talking about whether or not the artist of gangsta paradise could come out and sing with weird Al, I was like i think he might be dead oh and so i was just looking it up to confirm whether or not uh and the uh the artist in question is coolio and as of uh last month uh like September twenty eighth, so extremely recently, uh, he has passed away. So no way. That is, yeah. So that's sad. That is <laughs> so sad. That, so that will never be a reality. So that will not be okay. I'm yeah. sorry for choosing an example. To, okay. Jeez, Ben failed at music. You can there check you the bingo cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, I'm sorry. Hold on, I might have an update on failed for music. Man, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, we were just talking about Coolio earlier this week. We were because we were talking about how he did Keenan and Kel's oh, yes. opening number yeah. for, for the uh, Keenan and Kel show. The Keenan and Kel show. And it was always so like it was like iconic and amazing, but also like didn't really fit the vibe of the show at all. Sure. And we were like, what? What happened that coolio was like yes i would love to come out and be a part of this nickelodeon intro song yeah and we actually looked it up and i can tell you exactly what happened curious listener at home is that keenan and kel from keenan and kel before they were on that show were on a variety show called all that which was basically saturday night live 
for kids and aired on Nickelodeon. And much like SNL, every week they would have a musical guest. And Coolio had been the musical guest several times. Now, Keenan and Caleb this time are like 12, 13 or whatever. Like they're very young, but they're, you know, they you know they look up to him and think he's this really cool rapper of their generation. And he's on their show with them. And so they were like, he's like one of our best buds. He's like, like peers, basically even. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Peers. Yeah. And so they were like, we should ask him if he wants to do it. And they did. And he said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you just gotta shoot your shot. <laughs> it, what an incredible, what an incredible moment. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Well, I love that story. Yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. that anyway. works out. That works out. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe one day that'll be us when we we finally get to do like some some behind the scenes for like some type of major franchise. Be like, hey, can we help? And they'll be like, yeah, sure. Why sure. Not? Yeah, get in here, man. Get it. yeah. We take your your word for some stuff. Okay, I like it. Yeah, I like it. It's exciting stuff. Who knows? Um. Anyway, though, so where was I going? Oh yeah, so uh, when we were young, festival is this weekend, which I'm very excited about. Yes, going to Vegas. Going to Vegas. Have you been to Vegas before? I have not been to Vegas. No, okay, now, yeah, so me this, neither. This has been my first time ever. Uh, and this is like one of those events that, like, I think that when they first announced it, pretty much everybody was like, "There's no way in the world this is actually going to happen." Um. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try it. I'm I, I'm just gonna like roll the dice. Ha. No pun ah, intended because we're going to Vegas. Zing. I was like, I'm just going to roll the dice. And you know what? Like, let's just see. Let's just see what happens. Like, maybe, maybe like, worst case scenario, I get there. The festival doesn't happen. And I just go and have, like, an enjoyable weekend in Vegas with my friends. And it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but it seems like so far, despite the fact that there ended up being, like, unexpectedly high winds last weekend, that they did, in fact, have to cancel the first day. Woo! Did you see that? I did see that. that yeah. yeah. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you this weekend. I know. I know. I'm very, I'm very <clears throat> nervous about it, but uh, also very, very excited about everything that, that could happen. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's like right around the corner and this has been like a very interesting one because I've never really done uh, like major music festivals before. And I know that there is like an aesthetic to like the like the the kind of dress mm-hmm. that is typically found at these particular yeah so you do have an outfit planned out unlike I, me for the Weird Al concert I do have an outfit planned out yeah. yes indeed and and it is uh, I'm I'm pretty stoked about it however I'm just like I have I really don't know whether or not I'm gonna fit right on in or if I'm just gonna look nah you're gonna fit right on in dude like absolutely there's no look first of all there's no dressing like I don't think you can really if you're dressing like for the event in a way that you feel is right for the event, especially for like a big music festival, like you're going to be fine. Okay. You know, you're going to be leaned in as long as you're not like walking around in like a suit and tie or something, <laughs> you know, which you won't, which even then you could probably like punk it up some and people be like, yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, anyway, so my, my uh, outfit for those who are eagerly awaiting, oh, they um, are. it is going to be a uh, zebra print holographic, tank top hoodie there you go man yeah. i've yeah. i've seen pictures of it and it looks good <laughs> hopefully it does <laughs> um i'm i'm pretty stoked to go and, and like patrol about yeah in it i think mm-hmm. it, it should be fun it should be a really good time i might wear the current sneakers that i have on as well because i like they go with uh it's bright it's loud yeah it's exactly. vibrant yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly, like, like the event will be exactly most likely but so the other thing that has happened is that um it's it we've been able to like peruse the set list and so some of the some of the bands i'm most excited to see uh are going to be red jumpsuit apparatus which you might remember from in high school it was my first ever band which you might remember from high school end of sentence Uh, which you might might remember from high school (laughs) their first album was awesome (laughs) i'm hoping that everything they play is from that album um so we'll we'll see. So that's I think that's the very first thing we get to see when we get there. My my sort of like like look how look how trendy I am because uh, I know some of like the more offbeaten I don't probably not even offbeaten mm-hmm. uh, different bands would be Silverstein and Four Years Strong. Okay, in case anybody at home's ever heard those. Uh, and then like the big big names that I'm excited for uh, is going to be Paramore. Yep. and Avril Lavigne. Bam. Which, okay, you've decided on Avril. I've decided on, on oh, Avril. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Um. It was it was Avril or the All American Rejects, and it was like one of these like man, like I was so excited for Avril Lavigne, and then when I was like looking into the songs from All American Rejects, I was like, I can't believe how many of these I know like extremely well. Right, like you like, like you've sort of like heard all of their music in like the punk rock genre, but not realized it was them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so, it is not uncommon for me to like listen to 
like a Spotify playlist that plays music from this era and includes all the bands that I do know. Yeah. And then of course there's like tons of songs that show up that, you know, and are like ridiculously iconic, but like I've never like bought one of their albums before. Yeah. I mean, so like, I, I don't know anything about the band itself other than it's like, apparently I know all of their most well-known songs mm-hmm. very well. So that was like a big toss up, but I also feel like there's this thing with Avril Lavigne, which is just that like, I like the, it's like if she has like a song on the radio or something and I'm out driving, like, you know, in my, like my big truck with your subs <laughs> with yeah. my, by myself it's like it's like i'm like yep all the way up yeah like, <laughs> i mean it's not complicated ben oh, no. oh. <laughs> something about a skater boy yeah look here's the thing you have a chance to see avril levine do skater boy live right so i mean, what's I mean no one's that? gonna blame you for for you know choosing to see that i feel like i'd be able to just like like just do like a standing backflip afterwards i'm gonna be like Probably. so like yeah. yeah you're gonna be in your in your holographic zebra vest hoodie i know yeah 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 it's, I mean, maybe people will just be expecting it. Probably. Maybe probably, it. probably multiple people will even be doing it. Probably so. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not even, I mean, who's to say? Probably a lot of kick flips. I imagine lots of people just have skateboards at Avril Lavigne concerts, maybe, you know, waiting for the song. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah no, just in case, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring like a, like a tech deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like, grind. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I saw a commercial for Tech Decks this morning where you can buy shoes that put your fingers in that sit on the Tech Deck, so you can, you don't even. Have to, I was like, that seems like cheating. So like, they attach to the Tech they Deck. They attach to it. It's oh. like as if it's like you're snowboarding on wheels. Oh wow! With your fingers. How embarrassing for Tech I Deck. I know. I was like, they should, wow. They should bail on that promptly. Come on. But then at the same time, like you see the Tech Deck commercials where like these. People are doing legit kick flips with the with the skateboards like off of ramps and catching it and going back down. And I was like, that feels impossible. This is they gotta fix this in post. Like no one can actually do kick flips with a with a tech deck. Certainly they can. Yeah. I mean it seems Certainly like such they, a thing. Yeah. I mean I remember I remember this was another like middle schoolism is that everybody got really into tech decks. So yeah. like, you know, you'd bring them to school with you <clears> and you'd have them like, you know, in your pocket. Yeah. Because you didn't have keys or a cell phone or anything. Yeah. Why do we even have pockets? I know. Um if not to just store tech decks. And I remember what would very frequently happen is the wheels would fall off while they were in my pocket. So oh. I would like pull mine out between class right. and I'd be like, oh man, I kind of like, where's my wrench? You yeah, know, like, that's the thing. Not only did everyone have tech decks, they had a full maintenance kit on yeah, them. Uh, just in case, set yeah. of backup wheels. Yeah, just so, just so you're prepared. And then they came out with hand boards, which oh, were wow. like tech decks that were like a foot long. Yeah. Oh, man. Woo. As soon as I saw those, I was like, there is literally nothing in the world that is cooler than a hand than board. Than a hand board. I know. Yeah. Could you do lots of cool hand board tricks? Lots of hand board tricks. <laughs> uh, if anything, I actually would say it was like a little bit easier to do like an ollie. I'm like, sure it was. was like, <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Yeah. And then finally I got a like a like a metal tech deck that came with like goo. It was like a like a wax or something that you could like spread across the surface of it and it would like literally just make the thing stick to your fingers. Oh. And this is like one of those where again, I probably just walked around with like the wax in my pocket, which was probably melting all yeah. day and just like filling the inside of my pocket with this like waxy substance. This is exactly the sort of thing though that like when you're in middle school, like it sounds so silly now that you're an adult, but like this is, you'd like sit down at lunch and be like, this is this is, this is the this is basically like a power move. Like look what I got. I know. I got the tech deck wax. I'm waxing my board. I'm changing the wheels. I'm putting off-road tires on. I just re-taped it. I got some graphite to put in the axle joints, you know, like whatever. I'm ready. I'm tricked out. I'm ready. I carry all this stuff with me in my pockets every day. <laughs> I got like a little like a little like stand, like a little like workstation with like, right. like clamp it in. Right, <laughs> exactly. It me- meanwhile, it's like, can you do any tricks? Yeah, I could sort of ollie, you know. I could go, Whoa, look at that. Whoa. I'll, I'll roll it across I the could desk. Ro- yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as, many, as much as everyone loved tech decks when I was a kid, I don't remember anyone who could do anything with them yeah like, no not yeah, really tricks wise not really. I, I feel like this was also the case just in general with most of the people who i knew who had skateboards which was the th- like no nobody was like good at skateboarding but, yeah but plenty of us had them yeah and you know wanted to want to be uh, aspired to be good at it we all yeah. had tony hawk pro skater too so there was that slash the extremely goofy movie which yeah. i think set wildly unrealistic expectations for what, yeah. what i should have been able to do on rollerblades and or skateboard by the time i got to college yeah yeah like by the time you were 18 you could basically just by practicing in your backyard be pretty much at the top of the entire sport not to mention you should probably have a half pipe built 
in your backyard. In your backyard. This was the type of no thing, doubt. again, yeah, like I think I would have, my mom always called them no questions when I was a kid. This would be the type of thing where like, mom, can we build a half pipe in the backyard? And like, in my mind, it's like, I just saw it on the show that we watched, this movie. And it's like, no. Right. Yeah. But it's like, but Max has one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right down the street. Right. Him and Petey are, they're shredding all day. Right. Yeah. Oh. PJ. 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 Yeah. So yeah. Pete's kid. Right. Yeah. So I, I Pete Jr. Right, that's Pete, Pete, yeah, Pete anyway. Jr. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that, was a good, that was a very good half-hearted <laughs> Pete impersonation. Well, from, I see. I see a lot of Pete on the old uh, Mickey and the Roads to Racers. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. It's like uh, it's so interesting how they they have to treat Pete. He's like they they need a character for to be like a bad guy, but who's like always like just around the corner from being a good guy by the end of the episode. It's like oh, they, uh, sure. Every, Pete's Pete. He's always everyone's friend, but he's always just like overreacting to everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It is interesting how it's like yeah, you don't want to probably for kids movies your shows you like you don't really want there to be like a bad guy like it's not good for them like for them to establish the idea that they're like bad guys yeah there's always just more like a slightly antagonistic character <laughs> yeah 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 that's true that's yeah. true we, we we just recently picked up a great new book for addy it's about the pout pout fish and the shark oh yeah. the shark's a boy blob, blob, blob. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a good one parents pout, get pout it fish with the pout pout face anyway yeah. i feel like we've reached a great stage of the episode well to, ben is, you know oh, what though oh. i do feel like there is one more thing i wanted to i wanted to get in on this episode by all I feel means like it's a fun way to round off okay too. Okay. okay so um, <clears throat> Luke has been practicing like letters and stuff at preschool. Okay. You know, every, every week is basically like themed around another letter. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. Yeah, Cause good way just, to learn. yeah, good way to learn. Good way to learn. And so the other day, um, he wanted to, uh, I guess Beth was downstairs reading her Bible and Luke came upstairs and says, I want to write a Bible. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I think what you mean is you want to write a story. And he's like, mine's going to be even bigger than mommy's. Hers is this big. Mine's going to be this tall. And I was like, that's a lot of writing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really big. It's like, I think what you mean is you want to write a book. And he's like, ah, okay. And then he, you know, goes and sits down with his legs table. And then he, um, is like trying to write some letters and, you know, quickly realizes he doesn't know how to like spell or like how, I guess like, <laughs> you were like, right. And he comes back and tells me like, every, just, every time I write a letter, it just takes up this much space. And can you just like, could you just write it for me? And I was like, okay, okay, absolutely. I'll come help you, you know? And then he's just like, uh, he, you know, I'm like sitting there. I was like, all right, what are we writing? And he's just like, he like points at different spots on the page and like tells like, all right, I just want to put like this letter here and this letter here. So I just have like at random spots on the, like the page, like, oh, here's the letter A and here's the letter X and here's the Z. And it's like occurring to me that like maybe in his mind, the way that like, like writing in a book works is that they just sort of put letters on the page until worms are formed at oh. like, you know, <laughs> like, rather than like writing the words it's in like, a row. Right, right. So you just yeah. like, you slowly like, you know, just speckle them in. You just and speckle them in whatever you end up with. Right. And yeah. you have like the finished product when you stand back, there's, there's meaning. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, okay, okay, okay. Maybe, maybe he hasn't just seen someone do like lots of writing in a row. So like, all right, how about this, Luke? How about you just like, um, you tell me the story. You just tell me what you want to write down and I'll write down the story for you. Sure. Right. Okay. And then, so then he could like watch me write and like, you know, totally see like how it's done over the course of an entire page and all that. And, uh, it was, it was such a fun exercise. What did you come up with? You, oh man, we have like a whole entire page of writing, Ben. I can show you right there. That's our, that's our Whoa! story. Yeah. Can yeah. you read me any of it? Uh, well, that's what I was going to say. Maybe it'd be fun to just read the story me and Luke uh, ended up with here. Okay. 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 At the end. It's words about, on a page. Words on a page. It's about birds. Oh <clears throat> yeah. I love birds. And so like, I won't, I will say that like, I was sort of having to like prompt him along, like, you know, like what's it going to be about? And he's like, you know, I think he was mostly like looking around the room and like taking inspiration and stuff, but he's like birds. And so he would tell me about birds. Like maybe we should have a main character. And then we have a main character in there. And then, uh, you know, be like, and then what do they want to do today? And, you know, what's next and stuff like that. So okay. it yeah. wasn't, it, yeah, that's, that's sort of how we got there. Allow me to read you Luke's first story. It's fantastic. Oh, okay. You know, it's a real, it's, I'm on the edge of my seat dramatic. right now. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna hate me one day for reading this but oh. if you don't know it's not it's not it's very i was like really impressed with all the stuff he was saying so anyway i mean i'm trying not to laugh all right ready not not like not because it's like bad or anything but, all right all right luke's first story right birds like to collect eggs and build nests 
the bird then birds land on trees and get acorns. Then they land on grass and eat bird seed. Some birds change colors like chameleons. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> then they get stuff for their nests. Then they collect flowers. So this is your background on birds. Okay. I mean, <laughs> so you know. I'm, I'm learning a lot I about know, birds right learning, now. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. in case you didn't know any of these things. Uh, now we have our main character. Tweet oh. Tweet enters the stage. Oh, ready? okay. Yeah. yeah. Tweet Tweet was a red bird. He liked to dip his hair in the water and swim. Tweet Tweet has orange eyes and black feet and red hair. One day, Tweet Tweet wanted to go to the park. He loved playing on the merry-go-round, but Tweet Tweet was a stuffed animal, so he could not fly to the park. Luke offered to take Tweet Tweet to the park in the car and hold him in his lap. At the park, Tweet Tweet wants to play, wanted to play with the dog. Tweet Tweet fell to the ground, and Luke picked him up. Then Tweet Tweet wanted to ride on Luke's head. He rode on Luke's head all the way to the merry-go-round. The merry-go-round was fun. Then a dragon came. <laughs> Amazing! A nice dragon who hugged Tweet Tweet. (laughs) Then another nice dragon (laughs) and kissed Tweet Tweet. (laughs) Suddenly, (laughs) oh man! Suddenly, it began raining popcorn, and Tweet Tweet ate as much as he could. Tweet Tweet saw an airplane flying in the sky and said, "Whoa!" Then he got stuck in a giant shoe and yelled, help me. (laughs) Oh, boy. Luke heard Tweet Tweet and helped him out of the shoe. Tweet Tweet was so tired, he took a nap on a giant sock and began snoring. (laughs) I'm sorry. Uh, Tweet Tweet woke up from his nap and burped, then rolled over Luke's head. Then he had to go potty and pooped. (laughs) The end. (laughs) Last word of the story is pooped. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what are you even doing with that? Oh, it's so good. I, I would know. frame it. <laughs> I would frame it. Yeah, we should. <laughs> Tweet Tweet has a fantastic character arc. I know. Right, right. <laughs> so many unexpected things happened at the park. The, the most shocking was the fact <laughs> that there was not just one dragon, but two. Two, right, two nice dragons. <laughs> two very nice dragons. Yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the um, the narrative brought to life by my son, Luke, and his crazy imagination. Well done, Luke. Well done. Well it was done. a really, it's really, truly fantastic and original story yes. when it comes down to it. No doubt. I, I, I mean, I'm, I was, I was on, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. And I'm, I'm just glad that it, that it went the places it went. Yes, exactly. And we're all yeah. better for it. Yep. Yep. Well, thank we you go. for thank you for stopping me from closing today's episode <laughs> to share this particular <laughs> new installment. Yeah, uh, I look forward to more Luke stories. Oh, as well in the me future. too. Yeah, I think it should be a new segment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. And we now, never know about what he's gonna feel on a whim. And now but, a story from Luke. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much as ever for tuning into this week's episode of the Pop. If you would like to support us over on Patreon, you can do so at patreoncom popcornculture. Uh, I am excited to announce that for the month of November. November, actually starting on Halloween, uh, so Monday uh, after this episode comes out, uh, we're going to be starting our next step competition. Uh, the step competition takes place within <coughs> the Super Carlin Brothers Discord, uh, which you can gain access to at the $5 tier over on Patreon. Um, and with that, we have a really cool program called Pacer that we use that basically brings everybody into one place. You can connect it to any tracking device that you have or just like smartphone that you may have at your disposal because most smartphones have tracking devices. And uh, count your steps each and every day. There's a fun leaderboard. And it's just honestly, it ends up being like a really great motivation tool to go out there and kind of get some steps in each yeah. day. And there's like a fun uh, step in time corner of the Discord where everybody goes in and like motivates each other and talks about like what they've been up to and mm-hmm. their their goals for the day and such. So that's right. It's just an all around really fun way to interact with people from all over the world. So again, if you want to check it out, it's the five dollar tier over at patreon.com slash popcorn culture. But otherwise, until next time. Pop pop. pop.